If you heard that researchers identified two entirely new seasons, yes, it's true, trash and haze. We should normally have predictable weather patterns in which our Earth rotates around the sun and the angle at which the sun hits the Earth varies, but there's new ones appearing. You may have noticed, for example, that you get smog periodically. Just going to be various particulates that we put out into the air. A lot of it in the U.S. in particular has to do with burning forests, which are more intense now and that can pose health risks. This isn't just forest fires. It also has to do with the amount of production that we have. If we have varying energy consumption based on the year, we will have more smog when we're using more energy. The other is trash. Guess what? It also doesn't stay where you put it. You ever heard of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch? Yeah, that trash follows with the ocean and ends up washing ashore. So people are essentially going to have to clean it up periodically, and then it's probably just going back in the ocean to come back next year. But it is predictable. Also, not great. And I told you guys we've already lost 80% of all fish biomass in the ocean over the last 100 years. 80%, and that probably doesn't help. But hey, it might make new communities for evolving organisms, probably, maybe, I hope. We at least know there's bacteria out there that's learned to eat plastic. So that's a community. If you live on the east coast of the United States, you're probably familiar with the seaweed that comes in periodically. It can smell horrible. These massive bunches of seaweed just wash ashore. And that's going to be affected by how hot the water is and how much nitrogen that we pour into it. Which is, you know, my field. I work with alternative fertilizers. We dump massive amounts of fertilizers into the ocean, and it ends up fueling stuff like algae blooms, and we'll also get seaweed. When this stuff washes ashore, it smells like rotten eggs. A lot of the concerns around it are going to be tourism, but the gases that it releases, like hydrogen sulfide, are not great to breathe either. You ever smelled that stuff? It is absolutely awful. Sometimes I like to talk about the toxic algae blooms, because I grew up in California, so we had red tides. That stuff can be extraordinarily bad. There is some evidence that the algae blooms on the East Coast have caused neurological diseases in people, and also the big cats. It's not great, and I talk about that sometimes, like living near a body of water can increase your probability of getting ALS. There is something to fear everywhere. I just want to help you be informed about what to fear. Also, apparently the smog may support stuff like bacteria and pathogens in the air, which I didn't know until recently. It makes sense. Little, little worrying, but again, you can be afraid of everything. So what can we do about it? Winter is getting shorter, weather is becoming unpredictable, and the polar dome refuses to stay in the poles. And you know, the trash and haze season. There's honestly very little that any individual could do. If all of humanity got together and tried to solve some of these massive environmental problems, we might have a shot, but that ball is already rolling. So we just do the best we can. If you own property, you can have a natural garden in your yard. You can use less disposable plastic products. You can have a windmill or solar panels. It's a lot more feasible for a lot of people. Or you can just admire the doom as it comes, which I guess is my plan and I'll keep you informed on it. Come back for more.